Today we're going to talk about this one here. This is the Sniper Grinder from MHW Free Bomber. I hope I say that correctly. One of the first things you notice with this brand is of course the name. Uh, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it uh, and I'm not really sure what the meaning is. I saw somewhere that uh, MHW means make heart warm and then I'm not sure what that has to do with this bomber aircraft and uh, the whole militaristic uh, language. The grinder is called Sniper as well. So I don't know how that is going to make your heart warm, but I guess there's probably some purpose to it. Or maybe the meaning is just uh, lost in translation. It seems like this brand is actually a serious enough brand and they have some confidence in their products. I've been seeing more and more of their different accessories online. Uh, so I have a feeling they are kind of in a growth phase and it seems like it's one of the bigger coffee brands coming out of China at the moment. The first thing you notice when you get the grinder in your hand is that it's a quite nice uh, solid feeling even though it's a lightweight grinder. It feels like uh, really good materials and that's also underscored by the wooden cap here and the wooden backside. So uh, the materials are quality. One of the things that really stands out is uh, this brush here. It's an absolute thick piece of hipster lumberjack kind of a brush. I know Lance is really into brushes, so I think you should probably check out this one here. You could probably use it for some kind of DIY projects in your home if you need to paint a corner or something like that. It's that serious. It's also a dust blower and once again it's a bit more substantial and beefy than what comes with most grinders. The magnets are also a really nice touch. You can just pull off the chute like this and then you have easy access to cleaning. And this is something that we're seeing on more and more grinders in 2023. So that's also really cool. The ground spin is also magnetic. It's only a little bit but it does help get it into its right place. The bow chamber is of that type we have previously seen on the Varia S3 and the Laka Mini, so you could probably call it a kind of glorified manual grinder. This type of bow chamber does have some advantages. It's very easy to clean, you don't need any tools to take it apart, and the retention is also very low. The bow chamber is not very big, and the path from the burrs and uh, into the chute and down to the ground spin is very short, so there's not really room for much retention. Okay, but let's grind some coffee and see how it works in daily life. Pour over is not that interesting. It's pretty uh, standard in that regard. Espresso is a little bit slower. Now I've got it here on setting 12 and I got a dose of uh, 17 grams. So let's just pour that in and see how fast it goes. Now at the end, I find that it helps to get the retention down really low, as so you give it a little whack like this. And then usually when you do it that way, retention is not really a huge concern. Uh, it's typically within the range of uh, most hand grinders, so something like 0.1 to 0.3. So yeah, not really a deal breaker. When it comes to taste, I will say this one produces really solid espresso. Uh, the flavor is kind of thick, it has that nice mouthfeel of uh, conical grinders, but also reasonable uh, flavor separation. And in that regard, it's uh, extremely similar to Easy Presso K-Max. Actually, a brewed shot side by side between the two, and uh, it's really impossible for me to taste the difference. Uh, they also have the same burrs, or at least very similar burrs, so that shouldn't come as a big surprise. When it comes to filter coffee, at first I was a little bit disappointed with the grinder. I thought it had a bit of astringency, a slightly bitter finish to the cup. Uh, but then as I experimented more, I realized that I was grinding a little bit too fine. And then as I coarsened up the grinds, then it just got better and better. And uh, also to the point where when I compared it to the Easy Press of K-Max, it was quite hard to tell any difference. And several times I wasn't able to pick out which one was which. So I guess that shows that it's 
in that league with the, the really good hand grinders, which I guess isn't a big surprise since it has the same burrs, it uh, spins at a very low RPM. Uh, the brand says the RPM is 160. When I look at it, it seems like it's slower and uh, it's only grinding slightly faster than a manual grinder. So I'm not sure what the exact RPM is, but it's low enough that you don't have that uh, kind of re-grinding effect that might happen with some uh, typical electrical conical grinders. So overall, I will say it's performing really well for a conical grinder and it gives you that kind of flavor profile you would expect from the geometry of the burrs. Now let's talk a bit about the downsides. The first one is quite obvious and that is that you have this power supply here that uh, you need to have plugged in uh, this isn't that much different from some other grinders of the same types that are on the market. Um, I guess some people like it and some people don't really like it that much. For me personally, I think I'm not a huge fan of the solution. It does make the grinder a lot smaller, but if you have your coffee station on a regular kitchen counter, then you need to find somewhere you can hide this. Also, there's this little ring here, which is uh, magnetic. So it's locked into place, but I find that it can also slide around quite easily. It's actually not a big deal because it's very easy to see where the zero should be. So if it slides anywhere, it's quick to return to its uh, real setting. But yeah, again, that detracts a little bit from the overall impression. Finally, some people might be quite worried about the motor since the Varia grinder, which uh, looks a lot like this one, had some motor problems. And the same can be said about the Laka Mini, which also uses this kind of upgraded hand grinder design. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much. I feel like in my testing period, I have been brewing a lot of espresso with it. I used it for a video uh, I released recently for all the testing, uh, where I grinded a lot of espresso in one day, and uh, the grinder didn't have any problems with that. But of course, I can understand if some people would be worried about it, and I probably wouldn't buy it from a retailer where you couldn't get uh, a problem fixed if uh, anything happened. So I wouldn't import it from a different country because it could probably be a little bit difficult to send it back in case uh, of motor failure. So far, I've said a lot of great things about this grinder. I think it looks pretty well if you can uh, look besides the branding, the slightly weird name. Uh, it does uh, look pretty discreet on your kitchen counter and some nice material has been used as well. So in that sense, it's good. Uh, it's very optimized for single dosing and it works pretty well for both espresso and drip coffee. So in that sense, you could say it's a very successful product. But of course, all this also has to be taken in relation to the price and currently the retail price is uh, 400 US dollars and I will say in that price range you do have a lot of uh, great options. You have some flatbird grinders from brands such as uh, DF64. You can even get Eureka in that price range. Uh, also you have the Fellow Oat, it's a little bit cheaper. And uh, finally you have these uh, pretty good all-round conical grinders from uh, Barazza and Fellow at uh, $200. So I think it positions itself in a little bit of a tricky situation. I would have liked if it was a little bit more in line with the Barazza Virtuoso, maybe the Barazza ZT30, that kind of range, then it would stand out as a really good option. But at 400 US dollars, you also have a lot of other uh, grinders that might be a little bit more future-proof. For instance, the DF64, yes, it is annoying out of the box, but you do have the option to switch burrs and take the flavors into a completely different direction. Whereas with something like this, then you have the stock flavor profile and that's pretty much what you're going to be set with. Maybe you can change burrs, but I don't think it's going to make anything better about this grinder. So if you can find it on sale or stack up some different uh, coupon codes, maybe it can turn into a quite good offer. I will say if this grinder had come out just four or five years ago, it would have been a really standout product on the scene, but in 2023, we're just so spoiled with choices when it comes to grinders. So it's more difficult to say that it's completely unique and groundbreaking today. But overall, it's a cool grinder and I'm happy to have it in my collection. I'm also curious to see what the Bamba brand are coming out with in the future. I saw some pretty interesting products being teased on their Instagram 
and I already think they make a really cool puck screen and some other accessories that are also worth looking into. So if you know anything more about this brand and the coffee scene in China, maybe the meaning of the name, then uh, drop a comment down below. And if you have any questions or comments, then as always, you're also welcome to join the conversation. That's it for today. I will see you in another coffee video very soon.